Hello and welcome to vlog number 10. This is part 2 of my vlog about deciding to have brain surgery. Last week I talked mainly about the process, the hoops that you have to jump through to qualify for deep brain stimulation surgery. This week I'm going to talk about the mental process of making that decision. What went through my mind? People ask me if I was frightened about having brain surgery and my answer is always the same. I wasn't in the least bit frightened. I've had people virtually call me a liar for saying that. I must have been frightened. After all, it's brain surgery. The truth is that by the time I had to make the decision, my Parkinson's disease was progressing at such a rate that I was more worried about not having the operation. I think that I was fortunate to be offered the asleep operation. If I had had to be awake during surgery, then I may well have felt differently. And I salute all those who have gone through the awake operation for their bravery. I was also fortunate that there were videos on YouTube of my neurosurgeon, Ludwig Zrinzo, both performing brain surgery and delivering lectures on the subject. I watched these videos many, many times before my operation and found them hugely reassuring. I was also able to a great extent to calm the fears of my wife and children with these same videos. By the time I met my neurosurgeon at the meeting with the multidisciplinary team, I almost felt that I knew him, particularly since he was exactly as he appeared to be in those videos, a very calm and caring gentleman. I had reached the end of the road as far as I was concerned. Parkinson's medication didn't agree with me and, for the most part, didn't have any positive effect on my symptoms. The only relief I got was from cannabis. And although the respite it gave me was hugely welcome, I didn't see myself using it four times a day for the rest of my life. The operation was my only hope of regaining any normality. I was no longer fearful of dying on the operating table. That was preferable to remaining the way that I was. My only worry was not the operation itself, but the thought of surviving the operation and it not working. I approached my surgery with the attitude that, one way or another, my days of sitting in the house, shaking like a thing possessed, were going to end. My neurologist at Norfolk and Norwich Hospital had been so certain of that. He actually said, DBS will control your tremor. I did believe him, but there was also the thought that he could be wrong. He couldn't be so certain. I had read accounts of failed surgeries. I was unconcerned about the risk of infection, which could result in my having to have all of the hardware removed, or the risk of a bleed in the brain, which could result in my having a stroke and perhaps being permanently affected. I had so much confidence in the surgical team and their infection and complication rates were impressively low. The anaesthetist gave me my only cause for concern when he told me that he was worried about the number of dented crowns in my mouth and warned me that he may well knock one or two of them off when removing the tubes at the end of surgery. In the event he didn't and I thank him for his care and concern. The surgery itself was a breeze. I remember having a mask put over my nose and mouth and being asked to count backwards. Seconds later, or so it seemed, I awoke in the recovery room. Actually, five or six hours had passed, which must have seemed like an eternity for my poor wife. When she came into the recovery room, I briefly entertained the idea of looking at her blankly and saying, Who are you? But I saw the worry on her face and changed my mind, which was just as well, really, because I think she would have hit me. The most stressful part of the process for me was yet to come. The day after my operation, I was informed that my neurostimulator would be switched on and programmed the following morning. That night I couldn't sleep at all. I was so worried that it wouldn't work, that it had all been for nothing. In the morning, one of the nurses took one look at my face and said, Ian, what's the matter? And I just burst into tears. Happily, my DBS did work and restored a quality of life that I'd hardly dared to hope for. So I'm extremely grateful to the whole team at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery in Queen Square, London. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or have a topic that you would like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. 
Have a great week. See you next Friday.